So uh, it is an informal conversation this evening, just like a promenade. And uh, the title gestures uh, came out uh, uh, reflecting on this beautiful fragment from uh, Thomas Eliot. Uh, These are only hints and guesses. Um, when Manir invited me uh, to make a project with them, it was for me the first time I was approaching furniture. But uh, for me, it turned from the beginning as a, another way of reflecting on human life. So how uh, the way we move, touch, use, uh, but better said, live. Objects uh, and spaces speak uh, about who we are. And who we are is a layered certification of, uh, of time. And uh, it seems to me that we live in landscapes all the time. They may be outdoor as well as they may be indoor. And these landscapes are scenes uh, for life. This is a literary gathering from uh, uh, a little before 1000 in China. And it is a, at the same time a banquette uh, in uh, a garden uh, nearby a river. This landscape, uh, which brings us to exchange thoughts talks with other people and uh, always sees us with uh, objects which compose a scenography of domesticity or a kind of uh, a cultural theater is not something from one specific time or another. There is a, a specificity in the domestic landscape where we find ourselves uh, since uh, before Christ vulnerable in a way. So the domestic uh, landscape is a scene where we find intimacy, but it's also a, a setting, a place, a place where we can uh, relieve our mind from uh, uh, wages and so travel with the mind. In the Studiolo uh, of San Gerolamo by uh, Antonella da Messina, there is this coexistence of uh, an, uh, a breath uh, towards the outer world uh, through an imagination or imaginary of uh, a paradisiac garden, a landscape. And this we also find a very long, long time ago, like uh, thousands years before Christ with Tutankhamun, where there is this wonderful scene of uh, Uh, a young Tutankhamun with his uh, uh, espouse, young espouse, exchanging conversation in a garden. This uh, Eden representation always lives with our scenes uh, of uh, home, in a way, where we find the space and ease uh, to be armless and defenseless, and where we can uh, travel in other places which are distant. I like uh, the Garden of Libya, which is a fiction of uh, a garden and an outdoor, but that makes uh, more home the home. Or like uh, in the wonderful cycles of frescoes in Villa Malcontenta that are beautifully portrayed by Matthias Schaller, uh, where an interior is never introvert, but most of the time in the uh, ritual uh, context uh, speak, uh, speaks uh, of a culture which is contextual uh, under certain aspects uh, and uh, a stranger under others. The ceiling uh, of La Segreta by, uh, of Ferdinando de Medici was cardinal, but had, uh, um, how is the name, uh, Laica. Uh, not coming there, a scholar, um, life uh, was a representation of a sky, but the sky is of leaves. And the sky for leaves uh, also inhabits uh, contemporary examples, like uh, a small holiday house, Casa Catania by Marco Zanuso, in uh, nearby here, Genova, or in the kind of terraces, uh, which uh, speak about uh, an easiness of living uh, in uh, Casa Oro, which was uh, Uh, stitched uh, and uh, built uh, step by step by uh, Bernard Rudowski and uh, Uji Cosenza. 
What I observe is that, uh, in a way, uh, all these representations uh, uh, realize uh, senses, uh, but these senses uh, are a kind of loop uh, that allows uh, to feed our mind. Piero della Francesca was uh, portraying, making studies of uh, uh, Guido da Montefeltro, but it's not only a parametric study. It is uh, uh, a reflection on conscience, character, and movement. It is, a, it is a concept, in other ways, how Leonardo would say. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, there's no difference in reflecting on furniture, objects, uh, or spaces, as they all uh, exist out of relations with other elements which, make, which build up the scenography of our daily and our domesticity, where we may find domesticity even in a public context. How does it work? How does our mind work uh, uh, living of these associations which are so rapid uh, and in a way free though very precise uh, where we combine different scales, different natures, different uh, geographies, different times uh, and cultures. The associations of the mind are non-figurative, but they always hold uh, the gesture that have been repeated through time, as we saw at the beginning, uh, a conversation in a garden in, in antique Egypt, uh, non different from the laying in, on the terrace uh, with Luigi Cosenza, and we are in the 60s in Italy, or from uh, the Roman banquet. We touch. We touch, and also me and my team touch a lot to check what we're doing. We're now going to enter the projects. The first project uh, I'm going to present is Ottomano, which is uh, uh, sofa and armchair. The armchair was meant as a sample of the real sofa. And the wish was to have a sofa where you can lay at ease in comfort. And it is recalling uh, a kind of uh, uh, Turkish, Persian, uh, uh, Middle East culture of uh, sitting low in long conversation when we were discussing business, uh, laying on soft uh, landscapes of pillows that you may adjust, adjust uh, to put yourself comfortable because the conversations were long. There is, of course, a sensuality, but the base is solid. In the drawing, you may see that it's a wood construction, a little learning from the principle of Forcole in Venice, which are like the keys of the car of the boats in Venice, where you plug the piece of wood after you have uh, battered it into the water so it grows and stays stiff in the boat, and then just hanging pillows. The pillows hanging because it's always very, very difficult to clean uh, sofas. So the idea was to have something which is also non crucifying anybody in the house. The pillows are in three uh, gradients. So there is uh, uh, a row of six, uh, very tiny, only with goose feathers. There is three, which are middle, with a melange of uh, foam and goose feathers, and then a layered base. A sofa is always a presence, and the wish was to lay in a, a kind of uh, oniric setting, scenography, for what we said in the beginning, that always furniture speaks about uh, a world and an imaginary. And it was uh, a landscape uh, of uh, water. Of, therefore, the choice for all the pillows uh, uh, that were, would be hanging on the structure that you see here portrayed uh, was velvet silk. Velvet silk uh, is uh, a very fascinating material because uh, silk is very, has personality and has orientation. So if you can also look at me, or you can imagine, the hair or the wire of the skin, which is then cut, is always uh, in one direction. It means that when you're passing, caressing the surface of the silk, it changes color. 
that changes color at every move of cloud in the sky or every shadow of people moving in the, sea, in the, in the room. Therefore, the Ottomano is alive, is a living landscape. We had a version which was all in tones of blues and another one all in tones of uh, uh, popular whitish. Here you see the hanging system, which is very practical. There is a, a, a second type of cloth in the interior of the uh, Azola. I don't know how to translate this in English so that it doesn't fall. And here you see the front in the setting of uh, uh, the exhibition in Knocke, which is a, a group exhibition by Maniera as summer residency, where there are wonderful work by uh, incredibly refined colleagues. And uh, here you see, for example, the Ottomano together with Anne Oltrop and the Bijoy Jane. And uh, Ottomano seems to be relaxed. Uh, we went there for the opening and um, uh, with Mark Pimlot, who took uh, this uh, an adorable photograph where, to me, it's very natural to look like I was drawing the beginning. So it's really uncomfortable. But then there was also a child which was really climbing upside down. So it's not, uh, it has a presence, uh, but it's uh, basically very comfortable. Larga is uh, my first try of making a chair, which is incredibly difficult, I discovered. And the wish was to have a space with ease for all parts of the body, for the hips, for the elbow, for the wrist. So the man would be like in this wonderful, wonderful sculpture by Noguchi, a sculpture to be seen from Mars, a person free to move. So you can choose how to have a conversation at the table. You can also be alone and turn yourself without being prescribed a position and look at the sky or follow the movement of a leaf. The seat is a weaving. It is uh, wide, 60, so it's almost an, an armchair, and it has only three legs so that you can uh, play with your feet under the chair. You may even climb. We were then studying how to tame the geometry and all the, the portions of the, of the circle, and we were uh, investigating how we could make a weaving, learning from uh, uh, many different disciplines, from uh, fish nets, uh, uh, the uh, langoustine nets, uh, basket, uh, baskets uh, from Tone. And uh, the main uh, problem was how to uh, accompany the weaving with the presence, so the character of the chair, without uh, uh, giving discomfort or embarrassment to the being who would sit on the chair. These are the details so that you may touch and clearly an homage to, to Wagner when uh, uh, chairs uh, were thought to be uh, very uh, like a home friends, sharp in design, but where each part could be touched. So you could follow, play, distractly while sitting or living. The fixation is through an insert of wood, so there are no screws. This is something which is under question. If we need to implement a, a metal uh, uh, connector, which is, will be still unseen to give more solidity, but maybe it's not needed. And here you see the presence, front, well, front, side, and back. It is lighter than superleggera. It is walnut. Lighter from, than superleggera, I would not expect. I was very impressed. All the team was very impressed. From top view, you can see and imagine that uh, uh, I am 40 centimeters and I would have my hands open aside my hips. So it's really a very, very comfortable seat. We are busy now with the weaving and uh, uh, the weaver, Stefano, also produces, builds uh, musical instruments. And you can see the tries. We tried the first with uh, uh, four sectors uh, um, where the holes that you see, can you see my arrow? 
I don't know. Well, yes, uh, second yes. line, yeah. yes, it's there. Uh, you, those holes are made inclined so that in the weaving you could have you have more resistance, and then they are uh, tied in a way that they are very stiff, and then they can be cut neatly so that also the facade, which is unseen, has a grace. That is uh, the nobility of good craftsmanship or doing things with intelligence, I would say, because I don't believe in religions of craftship, as we said uh, during the conversation with Stephen. And then we had the try the center, where we have this little rise in the center, which now is too much, so then we divided in 16 sectors, so that we can, uh, uh, with a, a double circle, which is hanging, and it's highly possible that we do not need to put uh, a secondary weaving. The weave is cane, like for Tone, but it is thinner than Tone, it is 1,75 millimeter. And it is resistant. It's going to be uh, treated with uh, uh, impregnante, diluted pigment, which will be sprayed with a gradating intensity, dark in the center, with a nuance of lighter uh, towards the edges. And that uh, has, again, a story of presence of uh, um, expression of the object, but the other is also to uh, protect and make ready darker the part which would be uh, more easily uh, spotted no? by use. One thing I didn't say, I go back one second, is that uh, all the frame which is woven is non-fixed, so when you have to change it, you just go away with the pizza of the woven uh, uh, of the woven frame. Practical. Capretta, capretta is uh, the traditional uh, Tuscany rural table. You find it in all uh, the uh, the houses you go, or the taverne, osterie, and uh, it is uh, a very simple table. But uh, I wish a table or a, which could be not that big, but that would, where you could always add a place where to sit, to add, uh, to add a chair, to have a sense of uh, uh, hospitality within. But also I wish the capretta mysterious, like if it was a, a, a sky reflecting a vulcan lake. And uh, it is quite uh, normal in sizes, so it is 850 per uh, 1,800 approximately. But it is meant so that uh, you may never hit with the knees, the legs, all the corners are free. And it is extremely mysterious for this ultra gloss finishing. The legs are non-symmetrical, as you may see in the picture. The fixation is with insert of wood and screws, because then it has to be transported, dismantled, to be stable. But it is... Um, I find this uh, table highly mysterious. I'm very much in love with it, I must say. Where you see these detailed photos, there is a hinge which allows you to fold the legs and in that way allow a transport and maintenance. But the thing is that everything you place on top is mirrored. Really mirrored. So furniture, again, like a spaces, uh, they, <clears throat> they can make gifts to people. They give stories, they give fictions. Cavalluccio, the seahorse, is a bottle opener. It was the first thing object made for Maniera with another uh, project they made uh, in 2018, if I recall cor correctly. Uh, it was uh, uh, these little things, so a tiny object to present. And uh, uh, I wished uh, an object uh, which would uh, give back dignity to the bottle opener, so it could stay standing on the table and not uh, being uh, 
always lying on the table. I wish it to be a character, an animal, a person, a theater feature, very sharp, stainless steel, work with CNC machine, literally top down, carving from a prism. But then I also wished that the, the movement to open the bottle would be different. Normally you lift your elbow up and you go down. And uh, I don't find it a very civilized uh, movement. Like, it's not very elegant. So I preferred that you would do the other round and lift it up. So it's a wrist movement. The elbow is not engaged. I go quick here. Pesto was a, a twin for Cavalluccio, um, but we are going to realize it uh, maybe now because some people were asking if it was already in production, but it is not. And uh, uh, it is an object uh, uh, which is uh, with an archaic imaginary uh, to break nuts and to grind uh, spices. There is a space where you have just a stone alike where you grind, moving moving uh, on a surface all uh, with all your body so getting all the weight of your body to press the spices in the cavity but uh, it is also double face you may turn and break nuts or in italy we would say pinoli so those uh, uh, shells uh, which are black uh, and you use uh, that seed to make pesto in Genova. And uh, it is imagined to be in uh, basalt, absolute black, or tourmaline, which is a hard stone, a precious hard stone. They both uh, have very low porosity, and they were the stones uh, that uh, in ancient Egypt uh, uh, used uh, for uh, grinding perfumes uh, or uh, herbs or for their chemistry or their toilet. So it's, um, it's an antique object. Here we are still struggling with the sizes so that may be an object that you are not uh, lifting with only one hand, you need two, but it is not too dominant or uh, too much a diva on a table. Something completely different, uh, a playful object, dondolo. Dondolo in Italian means swinging, rock, well, rocking, uh, better said. Uh, it's not a rocking horse, uh, uh, though it may remind it, uh, and uh, it uh, is not a, a tennis racket, even if we are employing the same technique of the wonderful beginning of this, well, even 19th century uh, rackets, which were uh, covered with a weaving of leather. Uh, it is a cloth hanger, which is meant to swing. Why? Today, the gesture of people is not of taking a roach, place a jacket uh, and hang it. More likely, you see all the time people laying the, the jacket, the trench, the scarves on surfaces. It is a gesture that is more and more often seen, but it is a little careless. So I thought it would be nice maybe that you throw, there is this, uh, just hint of a theater that you throw your trench or your scarf on the dondolo and then you leave the room and dondolo still is slightly swinging. It is made from a round profile, thick three millimeters, uh, pressed into a mold uh, to achieve a customized form that which would be pleasant for the hand to touch and also gentle for the clothes to be welcomed. 
on the bottom there is no screw it's just a kind of a camping tent principle of a male female uh, in nest and uh, the uh, there is a pre-curving of the uh, patino of the slider of the skate but then more tension is made when you close the position and uh, the leather purpose is also to make dondolo very silent doing just swings gently on leather you see on the bottom so it's very very direct screws fixing things simple knot of fixation and then all a very very long thin three millimeter uh, stripe of black brown leather you can see through it is uh, lower than a table around 600 and it is a presence 900 millimeter so you have to give him space paolo 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 is literally a love story. It's an homage to Paul Kierholm, and uh, it is meant to be like an engine uh, that, and you can dismantle every piece of it. But uh, this low chair welks, welcomes uh, real comfort, like those wonderful feet uh, of the wife of uh, Werner Rudowski. Very, very, very thin really very thin 14 millimeter and 18 it is foldable and the tips are in ebony here you see the toolkit later you will understand more so from top going left right the top where you may put a, a hat uh, or a scarf or just lay your hand touching something soft while you are kissing uh, your partner or whispering uh, a story to a child. Then you have the detail of the legs uh, and the bar for the cloth. You have the bar, which is crucial for holding everything up. And you have the engine, which is the folding hinge a turning hinge for the legs. It is very simple. Here you see Paolo in blue, Paolo in soja, Paolo in white, sand white, folded. It is uh, less than a watermelon weight, so you can carry it around. You can ship it, but all the interesting part is in uh, this hinge, which is very smooth, which is welcoming the bars of 14 and 18. So this was really a rebus of managing sizes, <clears throat> where it's also hosting the bar, which is holding the uh, upholstery. And the hinge is uh, uh, a full piece. There are no uh, st stainless steel spheres. It's really mechanical. To allow the movement, there is a uh, uh, plastic in between. Then there is a twisted ring to make the grip. So every time you fold it, it's not loosening up. And when you close it, you just need a coin. So you always can take off uh, the uh, cloth. But I would like to go back because here I would like to honor uh, Ezio Tocafondi for the upholstery because uh, he taught me. I learned a lot. Um, this is 63% uh, uh, cotton and 37 line uh, textile. The colors are really as it is. Uh, but in between, Ezio told me that it is wise to introduce uh, a textile named Olona, which was a, tech, a cotton uh, woven textile used since 15th century to make the sails. 
What does it mean? It is very, very uh, dense, so that it is almost waterproof and windproof, and it is highly resistant. This is a trick from uh, old school, let's say, to avoid uh, annoying prints on the chain. Kimono. We were in the movement of, uh, of the chair, now we are in the movement uh, of a dress. Because uh, uh, Amarillis and Quinton asked me to try to reinterpret the uh, texture of uh, Z3 of the rumble, and I was claiming freedom from Z3, needing to do something different. And so I thought, why not a dress? So I started uh, taking measures of my body and trying to trace, it's my, really my first try, trying to draw the cloth in a way that it would be a loose uh, dress, almost a leisurely, highly erotic uh, dress, but decent. And I made myself a, a first try with a blanket, a grandmother blanket, a beautiful line. Then I went to make a paper model where I was told that uh, to, have a, to have a nice follow of the uh, forms, the landscape, women landscape. It was advised a pencil, which is not going to be frontal on the breast as you see here, but it's hidden and uh, it is traced uh, by the professionals, not me. Then they added a pencil on the back to mark slightly uh, the form again of the body and that's it. So a little bit you can have an intuition in the last slide, in this last square in black and white, how it's going to fall. But then there was a, an amazing research we made, which was incredibly fascinating. We've been studying fishes and birds because the logic of feathers is highly dissimilar from the logic of uh, uh, those elements making the fish skin. And uh, the logic of uh, birds is that they have clear horizons to which part families, parts of feathers belong. That also relates to the uh, flight uh, needs. Fishes need more like a, a, a flexible, suitable dress so they have a deformation of the same element following their muscles. We needed it because uh, all the pieces of the uh, kimono, uh, we wish to have uh, those rumbles uh, matching very precisely the edge of each part, but we also wanted movements. So we see that we go from uh, a kind of opus reticulatum to a, a peacock V pattern, which then becomes a fan. In the corner top, you see the learning from fishes. So fishes allow exceptions because they need continuity. And so they, uh, have uh, some elements which change radically size, uh, but there is always a kind of order. While before, with the fan, this is bird's logic. They help each other in our kimono. Here you see the overall uh, result. I don't know how readable it will be for you on the screen. I hope it is. So you see that it starts from a kind of reptile skin and then opens up. This is the back, uh, sorry, the front, before was the back. And here, all the pieces ready for the inkjet print, and here the print. There is going to be an interior uh, clap de chine monochrome. Uh, one is uh, uh, rust Pompeian, and another ton sur ton anthracite, anthracite uh, uh, purple blue. And this is, uh, it's a little too desaturated, so there is more secret of blue and purple, but is the first piece which is finished, which is the belt. 
I hope to wear it at the opening. And the last piece is Drago. Drago uh, is also a discovery. Uh, the wish was to make a textile, a textile uh, which would be uh, a regal skin. Dragoon, dragons, uh, is always been a little bit of scary feature, character, but also a respected uh, character. In some cultures, uh, it is a sign of uh, good fortune, in others not. But even in uh, uh, Paolo Cello, beautiful paintings, he made two, one of the two. He's painting uh, the dragon, which is uh, killed, not yet. He, uh, San, George, San George has only uh, the uh, arm, the weapon pointing at the dragon, and you really uh, stand for the dragon. He's really uh, much nobler than San Giorgio in the painting of Paolo Cello. So this creature has a regal skin and uh, maybe that he is also protecting you. So all the textile, which is a plissé, was meant for a throw or a scarf. We started from the plissé, which has strict rules. If you want a plissé with five millimeter overlap, maximum you can use a machine wide one meter 40. That has consequences because we started folding in one direction. So it is the red folding and dotted gray the overlap. Then you turn the cloth, you cut it, and then you start with the other folding and that would be the green. And then we would assemble them. This is the result. It means that we have smaller pieces, and that is what is now the part we have not yet finished. We have pieces to assemble, but sewing speaks about rigidness, rigidness holding together, but it has tension, so it is uh, inducing behavior to textile. While Drago is a free being, he needs to move. And so now we are learning that we are going to do punctual stitches where there is the fold. In that way, there is a combination of precision and looseness of movement. As said before, it is uh, uh, a textile which is in uh, uh, Trevira CS by Quadrat, uh, double layer, so it also, it can be both and warm and fresh, it literally gives you the, uh, it gives you your body temperature in a way. And uh, it is meant to be laying on the sofa and have uh, a shelter in the afternoon or evening or to be dressed uh, as uh, 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 important representative uh, cloth. It is always about movement because when it moves, uh, it reveals transparency and lightness. We wish to make even a curtain with Drago. And that is what you're going to see. If you can or wish uh, on 19th September in Brussels at the opening. Uh, Maniera is an exceptional uh, gallery. Amarillis and Quinton are exceptional because when they contacted me, uh, they, they give you trust and they give you an open landscape. They asked, uh, make a proposal. So there was this landscape to invent, and that is why for me it was maybe more uh, interesting to share the questions or discoveries that uh, I uh, quickly dis uh, stitched in the beginning of the conversation. So furniture is not just furniture, a room is not just a room, a spoon is not just a spoon. All these uh, objects continue uh, 
awakening and inventing uh, scenes uh, for lives, but even lives themselves. And that is what I'm so fond of. So I thank the patience of all the present, uh, of Alice and Rosie, and uh, I also have to thank Maniera for this uh, wonderful chance because I would have never thought to these things. Francesca, thank you so much. Um, do, will, can, do you have some, can, will you answer some questions, if possible? Francesca? Yes, of course. Sir. You can ask some questions, fantastic. Of um, I was so tedious. <laughs> not remotely, it was quite magnificent and such extraordinarily beautiful work. Um, no, that was an absolute treat. Um, we have a little time. I mean, I can, if I, perhaps I could ask a question to begin with. Um, I, um, I mean, you've been, yeah, I, I'm sure many people in the audience will be f familiar with your architectural work as well, your, your, your buildings. And um, particularly this interest in the textile extends into the architecture. I think one can look at the facade of Z33, um, and which is assembled from these um, uh, bricks laid on the diagonal that you, you, um, you've um, kind of had uh, carefully, you know, precisely constructed for the purpose. Um, and it has a textile-like quality that obviously brings to mind Semper um, and his association of uh, uh, the textile as, as the origins of cladding. Could you, what connections do you see, if any, between your interest in the textile at, at, level, at the scale of furniture and what I'm suggesting is a sort of textile association in the, in the way you might develop a facade? I'm interested, I think, uh, in uh, the preciseness, in the sharpness of ambiguity. That's my... Um, uh, I, I think the core of my interest in Semper, where it is combined a, 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 a cultural uh, uh, acknowledgement of the need of human beings to represent uh, uh, a vision, understanding, and hope for society, which of course changes in time, even though there are some permanencies through time, which is for me extremely mysterious. That's why I presented uh, those scenes, uh, uh, social scenes, in the beginning of the uh, presentation. Um, together with uh, um, uh, a very sharp knowledge of how to do things, and that is something very specific for each time. So uh, the ambiguity of uh, uh, textile is that uh, um, I don't think ambiguity is only uh, a feature of textiles. But I do believe that uh, representation of uh, a collective agreement and uh, of an individual fiction is the core of my interest uh, in everything, because it's about exactly human life. Um, we have a question from Mark Pimlot. Um, Mark, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Buonasera, Francesca. Buonasera. Thank you very, very much for that really wonderful talk. I, I have a question. Um, you, you talked about the body of the users, um, who might be any of us, and, uh, the, and in its engagement and movement, uh, words and concepts like dignity, grace, elegance, uh, and the idea of the gift all come up. This would seem um, uh, a central notion towards, or central notions towards um, meaningful relations between people and their worlds. Uh, well, first question, is, is, that, is that reading of, of things true? And, um, and if it is, how is it consistent 
with your your idea of your role or responsibility as an architect? Is that it's a very long question. No, <laughs> it is very, it is very true. Like uh, like uh, I, I, I be I believe that uh, all uh, or I observe. Uh, therefore, I believe. Uh, that people are at ease where they have uh, some uh, uh, extra space so that they are allowed uh, to find distraction, but meant uh, as uh, a space uh, on their own uh, without feeling lonely. And that uh, indeed uh, uh, embraces both uh, the um, practice of uh, uh, imagining and then building spaces and then uh, imagining and building uh, uh, chairs uh, or sofas. Uh, uh, there is uh, working on the uh, going on the tram, for example, those wonderful Milano tram. There are a lot uh, of uh, tiny details uh, that allow people to play distractly or to have a help that they would not uh, plan in advance. Mm. And this, I believe, uh, is a combination of a uh, um, uh, collective consideration as well as uh, of an individual specificity, which is uh, uh, mostly unpredictable, but uh, may be hinted. Therefore, this degree of uh, uh, Strabism, no, of adding some measures, some millimeters, some centimeters everywhere in spaces so that uh, you not only welcome differences, but you can allow that ease, ease for people to find themselves mm. and find something else. I don't know if this maybe sounds abstract, but it's exactly what, uh, what you said. But it relates for me a lot with measure. So measures are very important because that is a tool. So a lot of time is invested in uh, uh, touching, sitting, uh, measuring, uh, and trying to learn from all the existing around, which is so valuable. Um, Question from Matthew Barton. Matthew, I'm going to unmute you. Hi, guys. Not easy for me to relay this question to you, but I, I just, um, the objects are very sensual and delicately detailed. I was wondering if they relate to each other in other ways. For example, Oh, I found economy, for example, it ran through most of the objects, but mm -hmm. then I perhaps couldn't say that about the, about the sofa. So I just wondered, when you look at the objects collectively, if you could speak about a relationship or if, or if you have observed the relationship even in retrospect. Uh, you're speaking about money now, no? All of the, all of the pieces. Yeah, well, uh, um, Maniera, you know, it's a gallery for limited editions. So that means that it has also, a, um, let's say, it's a gallery, it's not an industrial production. That already changes, uh, let's say, the... Uh, feature of economical management. You know? For example, Tatu Bercala, that I'm sure you know, uh, was producing coffee cups uh, for Finnish airlines. And they were in plastic uh, and there were thousands. So the amount of pieces uh, is strongly influencing uh, the cost of pieces. Mm. This is uh, one uh, basic consideration that has to be done. And uh, since it is a gallery in this case, uh, the, and the edition is limited because that is the, the, the project, what they do, uh, I think they are in between 12 or 24 cases. So that uh, puts some constraints uh, under the aspect of cost. Oh, 
The other part uh, is that uh, so also this uh, implies some choice of material. Uh, mm, it's really very basic. Uh, I would I would tell you as a reaction that those pieces are non cheap now, but if they would be produced in even just a hundred, they would be affordable for most. So I do not believe in exclusivity. Imagine Paolo is like a camping tent. It has a core of stainless steel, 12 millimeter, then you have a, a skin of, uh, uh, so it's really very basic or also dondolo, but then uh, you make a mold for one piece uh, or six uh, changes everything. This, the leather is uh, very cheap because it's little use. So I think the impression uh, is, uh, there is luxury in a way. Silk velvet is an expensive material. So that, yes, like the, Arazzi in the palaces, like in Villa Medici, no? But uh, if you do it in cotton, and we're going to do it also a version in uh, cotton and linen, but of good quality materials, no? And that is a thing that for me, that's why also I'm not that fond of I Ikea, no? Apart from the metal things that resist stronger. Uh, I, I, be, uh, I have... Uh, 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 things that I have uh, since I was at high school, no? And I'm not from a rich family, not at all. Hmm? But I like things that last. So I rather prefer, oh, no. Matthew Barton said basta. I no. was just gonna say, I'm sorry, Francesca, because, oh. but I was going to say, I wasn't necessarily talking about cost. For, for example, the sofa, for every vertical upright piece, you require a horizontal piece in order for that piece to interlock, right? Ah, yes, there are no screws. It's very basic. Yeah. I just felt some of the ob other objects... Um, do you like my baby? <laughs> I just felt that all of the other objects were very econo e economical in terms of the amount of material they were using. Ah, yes. But really, the, the question was more about whether you saw a connection between, between the objects or not. I'm sorry, I misunderstood, but I'm glad I made all this long talk. <laughs> the objects, uh, it matters. It really matters. Like uh, in the 50s, we had Jakobsen, Birkala, uh, mostly the North uh, producing uh, uh, objects which were crazy in beauty in big amounts, so why there is not maybe a public commission with very good design and not cheap throwaway design? Can we design things at last? So I'm sorry I took a wrong lane, but going back to your real questions, I would say yes, all, because uh, uh, the Plissé Drago is just folding. So all the work uh, is uh, here in the brain and uh, Paolo the same is just uh, uh, four bars uh, and uh, one hinge. Okay, uh, uh, um, a PVC rond and uh, a ring uh, to fix it. Then uh, you have, yeah, everything is so basic, but all the pieces, not only one. Maybe, no, maybe kimono that's taking because it's all sewn by hand, otherwise that would be too rigid. Cavalluccio, Fraser from one block. I'm just passing through. Economy under all aspects, everyone. Larga, three legs. And it is really lighter because you saw the section, it's a triangle. So I can only say yes. And uh, one thing I like about that, uh, I like things uh, that are working good, uh, that are solid, uh, and that are direct and intelligent. I don't like uh, uh, too much when it becomes redundant. Don't like rhetoric. Uh, 